Welcome back friends of GNK, Rob and I here again with our follow-up corn video as promised from last week. All right, so we're gonna go through what we look for this time of year. And again, remember this isn't exactly something we're gonna change for this year, but we're learning so that maybe we can make changes for next year. We'll start with everything from diseases, ear placement, uh, stock strength, maybe a yield estimate, what we do, how we do them, list goes on. We're gonna give you a tar spot update and maybe a lead in as to what to expect in terms of ear molds or not, or what not to expect. Yeah, so for sure. stick with us. We're gonna hit the road right now. Okay, here we are at late season corn scouting. Tar spot is still one of the biggest things that we're always managing in corn. It's still new. We're, we're making new decisions every year. We don't fully know the whole spectrum of what to expect year to year. So we made some decisions this year and now I'm trying to analyze whether they were right or not. If you remember, we go into a year really kind of saying, okay, we gotta be prepared to spray tar spot twice with a fungicide. Maybe the first one even in June. We elected this year when it was dry in June, not to spray. That was our recommendation. Was it the right one? We're out here, we've been out here over the summer. I think it was right. Tar spot didn't come in in those conditions. The next question that I got quite often in August was, hey, I did spray. My three weeks are now up. I'm finding tar spot. Do I need to spray again? At that time, I looked at a lot of different corn. How bad was our disease pressure? How far along was the corn? The farther along the corn was, the less chance that tar spot can impact yield. Uh, the less pressure, obviously, the less impact as well. So the other thing I took into account this year was the 10-day forecast. A lot of times that, that three-week window of your fungicide was running out right before we got into the hot, dry August time frame. That is not what tar spot likes. So when I was finding corn that was pretty clean, could find some tar spot in there, with a 10-day like that, I elected to recommend no second application. Now we're out here looking in this corn. Was it the right decision? I think it was. We can't find a whole lot. This is actually a pretty decent looking chunk of tar spot in terms of you know how bad, but this is a this is a rarity in this field. This corn was sprayed. This is a typical symptom that we've seen in a lot of fields that it was sprayed and we were getting questions three weeks later because we're seeing some tar spot lesions so do we need to retreat well fortunately with the dry period we're just coming off of tar spot really did not progress any further from this so we were fine to let it go once you could get to dent or early dent if you can fend off tar spot to that point you pretty much have won the game we had to hunt and dig to find this leaf in this field that was in fact treated so we're learning more and more every year this is the big takeaway for this year Next, I want to talk about some additional symptoms in corn. There's a couple simple things to do. If you're making the effort to be in the field, look for this. First is, I like giving corn what I call the push test. Push on your stalk. Does it break off at the ground? Does it break off at a couple nodes high? That's a good indicator of the stalk quality and standability that you have. How long will this last till harvest? Right. I also look at my stalks. How many black spots do you see, which is anthracnose. Now fungicide does very little for anthracnose, but a healthier plant because of fungicide will tend to fend off anthracnose pressure. Yep. So anthracnose naturally deteriorates the stalk and rots the stalk down. This is actually very little <clears throat> anthracnose. If you mm -hmm. see a lot of black spots all the way down the stalk, or if you push the plant over and it snaps off, that's a good indicator that anthracnose may be setting in, uh -huh. maybe deteriorating your crop. You might be want to move this up on your harvest list. This won't stand as long. Yep. I really like the standability I see in here. Another thing I'd like to touch on is ear molds. We've been caught off guard in the last three or four or five years on getting to harvest, get to the elevator and find out, oh, we're getting docked for ear molds. Every year is different. A lot of ear molds, particularly gibberella, will enter the plant at pollination and can fester and show up late in the season. One thing to note, if your ears hang off the stalk and away from the stalk versus more upright like this, they'll be less susceptible to ear molds. The other thing is we've had such a dry period here that we're not seeing any symptoms of ear molds. We don't suspect any risk of ear molds. Our forecast does not imply we should have risk of ear molds. So we feel pretty good. The other thing I look at is tightness of husk. 
particularly at the tip. So every variety is different. You can't assume every field's the same. This particular variety is not very tight hust. So because it's not tightly hust, I also am not fearful of ear molds in this field leading to vomitoxin. Vomitoxin penalties are hurtful. They cut in our pocketbook rather quickly. So it's important to know. We have not been in a field yet that we have nope. seen or fear an ear mold issue this year. Okay, this time of year when we're walking cornfields, there's, uh, there's a few things that people find commonly in a field that I'm actually not too worried about. One of them would be smut, like we see here. That's typically caused from a damage at some point in that corn's life. It's not usually very widespread. I don't get too worked up about it. The other thing that you might find, I call purple leaf sheath. Any place that you have a place where water can collect and the pollen from that early pollination timing collects, you'll get what's called purple leaf sheath. So it'll look like a disease right at the base of, in this case, this leaf. You'll find it at the ear. Uh, again, not something that's concerning to us. So finally, we're gonna give you a yield estimate of and our approach on how we look at estimating yields prior to harvest. I wanna make a comment first of all. So on our corn crop in general, there's one thing that I haven't particularly liked this season, Rob, and that's the unevenness that we see. We've peeled back the husks on 20 or so ears in a row just to get an idea of the uniformity we have in the field. And we see this in a lot of fields. So corn is designed to set the ear at either the sixth, seventh, or eighth node down. The ears vary. We're up and down and up and down. Some of these are at the sixth, some are at the seventh. As a result of that, we don't have evenness. We have we have ears that are 14 around and we have ears that are 18 around right down the same row. That's very difficult to get a true assessment on what your crop really is because it's so uneven. And for that reason, I think it's gonna be limiting in terms of top, top numbers. So if we're expecting 230s and 40s and 50s, it will be difficult to achieve because we just don't have evenness. So what you need to do is you need to walk into your field and you do need to peel back husks so you get an idea of what you have in general. And so the right approach is in 30 inch corn, you need to measure off 17 feet, five inches. And what does that give us, Rob? That's one one thousandth of an acre. One one thousandth of an acre. If we plant 33,000, for example, we should have hopefully 33, 33 plants. plants. Plants different than ears. Plants are different than ears. You may plant 33, but you will probably not have a 33 ear count. Count the ears in that 17.5 and figure out what your ear count is. So the formula is this, ear count times rows around on the cob times kernel length. All that divided by the magic number. And this is the dilemma this year. Mm -hmm. So the textbook value that we divide by is 90. That's just a textbook value. What does 90 stand for, Rob? That's the number of thousands of kernels required to fill a bushel of corn. That's right. That divisor is implying there's 90,000 90, kernels of corn in a bushel. Yep. The challenge this year is, is we have variability in rows around. So if you break this off, we have anywhere from 12 around to 18 around right down the same row. And so that will skew our divisor of 90. In a good yielding year, a lot of times we will use 75 or 85 as our divisor because we have deep, big kernels. More kernels, bigger ears, fuller ears, more kernels in a bushel. Every five is about 10 bushel. So you could easily be off 20 bushel in your estimate if you go from 90 to 80. Hence the challenge to really predict this. It's a lot easier when every ear is exactly the same, when they're all 18 around and they're all 40 long, that's a really easy estimate. So it's gonna be tough to get true handle on a lot of this corn. I suspect the last two weeks, three weeks here have been pretty stressy, pretty dry. That's gonna shrink down kernel depth and kernel size. So I think our divisor is gonna be closer to that 90 mark, Rob. Right. 
And in some cases where corn maybe is hurt worse than others, this is actually pretty good corn. We may have to be even go up to 95 because we're gonna have a smaller kernel set. So it's gonna take more kernels per bushel to equate 56 pounds. So hence our number has to go up to 95. So keep all that in mind when you're assessing your yields. So we're gonna use a 15 average rows around. When we count off kernel length, we usually skip the first or second kernel on the butt of the ear and skip the last couple kernels on the tip to get a kernel count of length. So at 36 kernels long, average of 15 around. What do we wanna use for our divisor at this size of kernels? At this stage in the game, I'm gonna use 85. Okay. Because of past experience has shown me what I see in kernel depth currently, I'm comfortable with an 85. Okay, we had 32,000 plants. So I'm gonna take 32 times our 15 rows around, times our 36 long, and then we're using our divisor of 85. Gives us a 203 average here. Not bad. So we've been dry here in August. What does that mean in terms of yield for a corn crop? That's what Im it's impacting that 85 number. It's our divisor number. It's our depth of kernel. Actually, the period from August 15th to upcoming September 15th, if you look on the graph here, we in a lot of parts of the country, not particularly here, a lot of parts of the country are the driest in 131 years, which is a poor finish to the crop. Mm -hmm. So a month ago, earlier in the reproductive stages, we were more in the 230 camp on this corn, Rob. And right. so our calculation today is 203. That's believable to me. I would feel very comfortable with that number today. Yep. But the bottom line is we've taken some top end off of our crop because of the last two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah, that dry finish is, is around a 30 bushel swing depending on what you end up like. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you find this information helpful. See you in the next video. There's one thing that I haven't particularly liked this season, Rob. 20 bushel in your estimate, Rob. The average of the average, Rob. The average that I did, Rob, 32 ear count, mm -hmm. Rob. Our divisor of 90, Rob. So Rob, what's our calculation? So uh, Rob, what's our calculation? Do, 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 do. That sucks. We were more in the 230 camp on this corn, Rob. Yep, yep.